So hi guys, this is Chandan and I welcome all of you to the second lecture of this course and I hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we will discuss about these topics as you can see on your screen. We will discuss about what is C, we will discuss why its name is C, history and development of C language. Okay, we will discuss about version of C language. We will see the program structure of C language and we will also execute the first program of C language in this video. And at the end of the video, we will discuss about program execution of C language. We will see how C program executed. So let's get started. So the first question is what is C? So C is a high level programming language developed at AT&T's Bell Laboratory of USA in 1972 by Dennis Ritchie. I have mentioned here. So as you can see, and we have also discussed about it a little bit in the previous video. So if you have not watched the previous video yet, then please go and watch the previous video link in description and then come back to this video. Okay. So please go and watch the first lecture if you have not watched yet, because we have discussed very, very important topics related to computer system and programming, how computer understand programming languages what are programming languages, what are flowcharts, algorithm and many things we have discussed in first lecture. So please go and check out if you have not watched yet. Okay, now come to the point. So C is a high level programming language developed at AT&T's Bell Laboratory in 1972 by Dennis Ritchie. Okay, fine. Now let's move to the next topic. So the next question is why its name is C? Means why the name of C language is C? Nothing else. Okay. And it is just for your knowledge, just for your understanding. Okay. So in order to know, in order to understand why the name of C language is C, we have to take a look on the history and development of C language. Okay. So the origin of C language or you can say development of C language is very tightly close to the development of Unix operating system. Okay. Let's see why it's uh, uh, related to Unix operating system. Okay. So let's see why the name of C language is C and how it's related to development of Unix operating system. So let me write it down here. So in 1964, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. Okay. So let me write it down the name of those programmers. So in 1964, Kim Thompson and Dennis Ritchie developed the Unix operating system first time using assembly language on PDP-7. Now what is the PDP-7? So PDP-7 was the mini computer at that time, okay, in 1964. So Dennis Ritchie and Kim Thompson developed Unix operating system first time in 1964 using assembly language. When the next version of PDP-7 launched as a PDP-11, what was the next version of PDP-7? The next version of PDP-7 was PDP-11 and what is the PDP? The mini computer. Okay. PDP was the mini computer at that time. So when the PDP-11 launched, then again, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie developed Unix operating system. Unix operating system for PDP-11. Okay. Now, after development of Unix operating system for PDP-11, Ken Thompson desired for a programming language in order to develop utilities for the new platforms. So, what he did at that time, he modified the newly or you can say recently developed language and the language was BCPL as you can see here, BCPL and the full form of BCPL is Basic Combined Programming Language. You can also note down on your notebook, the full form of BCPL is Basic, let me write it down here. I'm just telling so the full form of bcpl is basic command programming language and it was recently developed at that time that's why its official description or you can say official documentation was not available at that time so ken thompson modified this language its syntax and named this new language as b language the first letter of bcpl Okay, because it was derived from BCPL. He developed this language by modifying the BCPL. So that's why he named this language is B language, the first letter of B. In 1971, when Dennis Ritchie started improving the B language, let me write it down here. When Dennis Ritchie started improving the B language, the first time he added character type in B language. And then he named this new language as new B. In short, you can say NB. 
एन बी न्यू बी लैंग्वेज ओके एंड केन थॉम्सन ने स्टार्टेड राइटिंग कर्नल ऑफ यूनिक्स ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन न्यू बी लैंग्वेज सो आफ्टर सम टाइम्स अराउंड नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू द रिजल्ट टाइप्स एडेड टू दिस न्यू बी लैंग्वेज लेट मी राइट इट डाउन हियर अराउंड नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू द रिजल्ट टाइप्स मीन्स डिफरेंट डेटा टाइप्स एडेड टू दिस न्यू बी लैंग्वेज ओके एंड सेवरल फीचर्स एडेड सच एज पॉइंटर्स टू जनरेट पॉइंटर्स ऑफ ऑल टाइप्स एंड और यू कैन से टू रिटर्न टाइप ऑफ फंक्शन सो वेन दिज फीचर्स एडेड टू दिस न्यू बी लैंग्वेज देन इट इज नेम्ड एज सी लैंग्वेज ओके द नेक्स्ट लेटर ऑफ बी सी पी एल द नेक्स्ट लेटर ऑफ बी सी पी एल सो दिस न्यू लैंग्वेज वॉज नेम्ड एज सी लैंग्वेज ओके द नेक्स्ट लेटर ऑफ बी सी पी एल बिकॉज इट वॉज डिराइव फ्रॉम बी सी पी एल डेट्स वाई ही नेम्ड एज ही नेम्ड दिस लैंग्वेज एज सी लैंग्वेज एंड इट जस्ट अ फैक्ट बी एंड सी लेटर्स आर इन अल्फाबेटिकल ऑर्डर सो दिस इज वाई द नेम ऑफ सी लैंग्वेज इज सी नाउ आई होप इट्स क्लियर ओके एंड यू आर गेटिंग ऑल दिस पॉइंट्स and we have also seen the historical development of c language how c language developed okay now let's move to the next topic now the next topic is version of c we have different version of c okay so we will discuss about all these versions one by one so let's start from the first let me write it down here so after development of c language in 1972 the first edition or you can say the officially first edition published in 1978 by brain kernigan and dennis ritchie and therefore this version of c language is referred as k and rc as you can see here k and rc and sometimes it also referred as c78 okay c78 because it was published in 78 1978 that's why sometimes it's also referred as c78 when the brain karingan and dennis ritchie published the first edition of c language in 1978 they introduced several features to this language okay and those features are as you can see here i have mentioned the standard library the standard input output library the long int data type the unsigned int data type and the very very important feature that he improved or you can say that he changed the compound assignment operator the compound assignment operator were changed from this to this now what is the compound assignment operator we will discuss about it when we will discuss about operators in the future in the next tutorials okay so don't worry about it now after the publication of first edition of c or you can say after the k and r c after this version of c language several features were added to the c language and during late 70s C language was implemented for different mainframe computers mini computer as well as micro computers in 1983 the ANSI as you can see here ANSI and the full form of ANSI is American National Standard Institute okay ANSI formed a committee the name of committee was X3J11 the ANSI formed this committee okay and the aim or or you can say the goal of this committee was to establish a standard specification of c language okay and one of the major aim or you can say one of the major goal of this committee was to develop or to create a superset of this k and rc because after this version several feature were added to this language the c language okay so nsi decided to establish a standard specifications and in 1989 the c standard was ratified as x3.19 89 okay by this committee so in 1983 nsi formed this committee x3j11 to establish the standard of c language and this committee established the standard of c as x3.1989 in which year 1989 this denotes the year okay and this version of c language is known as or you can say is referred as ansi c or c89 okay both are same some book preferred ansi c or some book preferred c89 both are same 
So when the ANSI CA standard was established by the standard committee of ANSI, by this committee, then this committee also included several features to this standard. And those features are, so the first feature is function prototype, second feature is void pointers and the third feature is international character set. These features were added or you can say these features were included in ANSI C standard by the standard committee. Now this version of C language, the ANSI C version was adopted by the ISO, International Organization for the Standardization in 1989. Therefore, it is also referred as C90. In some books, we will find the C90 version. Okay, the C90 is nothing similar, the ANSI C version. Both are same, the ISO C90 and ANSI C or C89, both are same version of C language. Okay, now the, in 1999, this ANSI C standard or you can say C89 or you can say ISO 90 was further revised. And this version of C language is commonly referred as C99 because it was revised in 1999 okay so in the 1999 when the ANSI standard was further revised then these features were included okay and these features are very very important we use these features in the current version of C language these features were included in C90 version okay and these features are inline function variable length array and single line comment and we will discuss about all these features in the future lecture of this course so don't worry about it okay now let's move to the next version of c language so the after the c99 version the next revision of c language is again started in 2007 and it's completed in 2011 okay and this version of c language is referred as c11 okay now after the c11 the c standard again revised in 2018 and this version is known as C17 and no extra feature were added in these versions and the latest version of C language is C17 this is the current version of C language and the next version of C language is expected in 2023 in this year and the informal name of next version of C language is C2X so as we seen these are the versions of C language okay and currently we are using C17 this is the latest version of C language. Now let's move to the next topic. Now the next topic is a structure of C program. Okay, so let me write it down here. So this is the structure of a C program. Okay. All the statements written inside the curly bracket executed okay in each and every C program there is a main method or you can say main function and this is the main function and execution is started from this main method okay in each and every C program there is a main function and the execution of C program is started from this main function and all the statements, these all the statements written inside the curly brackets executed one by one. Okay, I hope you are getting this point. Okay, now what is int? So int is a return type of this main function or main method. Okay, now what is the return type? So don't worry about it. We will discuss about it in the future lecture when we will discuss about functions. Okay, and data types. Then we'll discuss about what is int. For now, just understand this main method will return an integer type value. Okay, that's why we have written here int. Okay, simple. Now let's write a C program, then it will be more clear. So the next topic is first program in C language. So let's write the first program because I'm very, very excited for the first program. Okay. And then we will see how she program executed. So first I'm writing it here. Then I will use the ID and I will show the execution of C program. Okay. So let's start. I have to move it up. Okay. Now fine. So let's write our first program in C language.
So this is a C program to print hello world on the screen on the console. Now let's discuss about each and every lines, each and every keywords used in this program. So in the first line I have written hat symbol include in angular bracket stdio.h. Okay, so what is the stdio.h? So stdio.h is a header file and which header file? A standard input output header file. Okay, the standard input output header file. So the meaning of this line is just simple. It's saying that include the standard input output header file here. Okay, I hope you are getting this point. And these statements or you can say the statements started from hash symbol in C program is known as pre-process directive. Okay, and it is not compiled. It is pre-processed by the preprocessor we will see about it when we will discuss about the execution of c program in this video okay just after it now in the next line i have written int main okay this parenthesis and curly bracket this is the return type as i discussed previous and this is the name of main function main okay and this is the body of this function or you can say range of this function now in the body of this main method main function I have written printf and in between the these parentheses hello world using double quotation okay so what is the meaning of this line this line just saying print hello world on the console what is printf printf is a built-in function now one more question is here why I have included this header file here what is the use of this header file in simple word you can say the meaning of this printf method the meaning of this printf function is stored in this header file, the stdio.h header file. The prototype of this printf method is stored in stdio.h header file. That's why I have included this header file here. If I'm not including this header file here and if I'm trying to execute this program, then it will generate error. Compiler will not understand what is the meaning of this printf. So that's why I have added this header file here. And after adding the header file, when I will execute the program, then compiler will search the meaning of this prototype in this header file and compiler will get the meaning what is printf and each and every statement in C program ends with semicolon okay this is so ends of a statement as you can see here I have used semicolon here because the statement printf is ending here now this double quotes used for strings it will be more clear when we will discuss about data types now let's move to the actual implementation of this program. I'm using Visual Studio Code right now. Okay, in the next lecture, I will show you how to set up environment for C language, how to install compiler, how to install ID, all the stuffs. Okay, so let's execute our first program. So first I will create the folder. Okay, the name of folder will be 01. Okay, and in this folder, I will create a C program file and the extension of C program file is .c. Okay, so the first I will write the name of program first dot c. Okay, simple. So this is our program file. Now I will write the program here. Okay, so this is our first program to print hello world. Now let's execute it. Okay, so as you can see, this is the output hello world. Okay, and as you can see here, this is the exe file. This is the exe file. Now let's try to print something else. So I'm writing here okay now let's execute it 
so as you can see here this is our first program in C language simple now let's move to the next point that is execution of C program and let's discuss about how this program is executing in the computer system so the next point is C program execution okay now let's see how C program executed on the computer system okay so the C program that we write using C programming language is known as source code okay and the extension of this source code is dot C okay let me show you so as you can see here the extension of our first program is first dot C and this is known as our source code the first dot C this file is known as source code okay fine so this is our C program okay let's say name of this C program is first dot C so the any C program or you can say the source code of C program is first pre-processed by pre-processor this is the pre-processor and the C program is pre-processed first now what is the meaning of pre-processed so pre-processor is responsible for the including all the required header file that we have mentioned in our program for example let's say here I have mentioned stdio header file so when this program will be go for the execution then preprocessor first will include this header file here okay and when preprocessor include this header file then our program will be expand okay that's why the I have written here expanded C program so after the preprocessed the expanded code is handed to the compiler as you can see here this is our compiler okay and this expanded code is now going to the compiler so compiler first checks for syntax error if there is any error or not if there is any error let me write it so the first compiler checks for the syntax error if there is any syntax error in a program then compiler generate error and compilation is stopped okay so in that situation we have to correct our code and again the compilation start from starting again our code will be pre-processed and then it will hand over the compiler again compiler will check if there is any syntax error if again there is any syntax error then again compiler will generate error if no then further compiler will generate an assembly code okay compiler will convert our program in assembly code okay now after converting our code in assembly code it handovers to the assembler now the role of assembler is started from here now assembler convert our program in object code in which code object code and the extension is first dot obj okay and here the extension is first dot s okay fine after generating the object code linker is comes in role okay and what linker do linker links all the library functions with our program now what is the library functions so this is the example of library function the printf is a library function and the name or you can say the prototype of this printf is stored in this stdio.h header file but the definition of this printf function is stored in c library okay so in order to use in order to execute our program linkers link the definition of this printf function with our program okay so this is linker do so what linker do linker links object code with the library function and generate the executable file and the extension of this executable file is dot exe so here the extension of program will be 
फर्स्ट डॉट एक्सी ओके आफ्टर जेनरेटिंग द एक्सी फाइल कंपाइलेशन कंप्लीटेड ओके हियर compilation completed at this level okay when executable file is generated when compilation is completed now the loader comes in the role now what is the loader so loader is a program okay or you can say loader is a tool that loads our program in the ram in the memory so the cpu can execute our program okay so at this level compilation completed now the execution is start from this level okay execution is start from here loader loads our program in the memory okay then cpu checks for the logical errors and if there is any logical error exist then our program will not execute it successfully it will generate any error or it will generate any wrong output wrong result unexpected result okay so in that case we have to correct our logic whatever the logic we have used in our program and then again we have to compile our program and then we will execute the our program and this time if there is no any logical error exist in our program then our program will execute successfully and will generate the expected output okay so this is how c program executed by the cpu one more thing is here let me zoom out okay so let me change the color from here to here compiler perform all these tasks all these operation internally okay so there are three main steps or you can say there are three main operations generally we considered in execution of c program let me write it down here first is expanded code okay then the second is object code and the third is executable code and the extension is dot exe and the extension of object code is dot obj and the extension of expanded code is dot i okay so these are the main steps or you can say the main operations in the execution of c program first our program is pre processed by the pre processor and the pre processed code is hand over to the compiler okay then compiler generate the object code dot obj okay the object code and the extension of object code is dot obc then linker links the library function with the object code and generate the executable file the extension of the executable file is dot exe so this is the major steps in the execution of c program but this is in detail how c program executed in the computer system okay so if you want to take the screenshot then of course you can take the screenshot let me zoom it so you can take the screenshot of this for your exam preparation so this is all about the execution of c program how c program is executed if you have any query related to all these topics we have discussed in this video then please let me know in the comment section and please share this video and subscribe the channel for now bye bye take care